My one pound combat robot cheesecake is ready for another tournament. My last tournament had some very unfortunate failures, so I made sure to address them before competing again. I 3D printed my drive motor mounts to be solid so they won't break and lose hold of the motors. I replaced my weapon shaft with a stronger one so it won't bend during large impacts. And I organized my electronics with specific locations for everything and specific wire lengths so I don't miswire anything this time. This is where the receiver and mixer live. This is where the two drive motor controllers live. This is where the weapon motor controller lives. And this is where I'd put a battery. If I had one! There's one more upgrade I made to Cheesecake. More of a configuration, actually. This is my new anti-wedge attachment, which I'm calling the Sweet Tooth. This is a single flat fork which mounts under my weapon motor. Why am I doing this? Well, fans of Cheesecake already know that wedges are the bane of my existence. But fans of the BattleBots TV show know that the way to counter wedges is with forks, because a wide wedge cannot hug the floor as tightly as a narrow fork can. But how does a fork help a horizontal spinner like Cheesecake? Well, Normally, when I hit a wedge, I go flying upward while my opponent stays on the ground. My hope is that, if I can get this fork under my opponent's wedge, it'll hold me down and allow me to transfer more of my energy. Or, it will lift my opponent up into the air with me, so my opponent doesn't get the better of those exchanges. Or, this fork will break my entire frame as I try to contain all that vertical force. The way I see it, this is either madness or brilliance. It's remarkable how often those two traits coincide. With all these changes made, Cheesecake and I headed to New Jersey to attend April Annihilation, sponsored by Fubar Labs and IT Gressa, and hosted by the Garden State Combat Robotics League and Warren County Technical School. The tournament had 14 Antweight robots competing in a double elimination bracket which meant that you would only be knocked out of the tournament if you lost twice. This tournament also had a brand new arena, with excellent lighting that made for some great footage. My first fight was a blast from the past, Shin Kicker. This is the same robot I fought at my very first tournament one year ago. Cheesecake won that fight, but we've both made some upgrades since then, so let's see what happens now. Three, two, one, fight! Cheesecake is a blue robot, cheesecake is a white robot. Both of these are horizontal spinners. Which should lead to some pretty fun fighting. Cheesecake goes straight for the wheels of shin kicker. it's nice to start with a win. I was lucky to have a slight reach advantage, and I was just a little bit faster than him, so I was able to get around to his wheels while only taking a small amount of damage myself. My second fight was against a new bot from Tam Robotics, Shotgun, which is a Synthwave kit robot. I've seen videos of the original Synthwave fighting, so I knew I had to avoid the weapon as much as possible. Accidentally backed into his weapon there. Thank you. 
tentacles. Yeah, that's basically all I can say about that fight. Cheesecake loves to chew on tires. Even so, I was really impressed that Shotgun kept moving so well. His wheels actually behaved like really good armor, and my armor got pretty mangled from that one hit to my back. But I survived, and that's what matters. My third fight was another blast from the past. Nick Sandy X. This was one of the robots I fought in my very first fight with Cheesecake, and we both look a lot better than we did a year ago. Nick Sandy X has a titanium chassis, and he's using the same spinner which Bugbite used to take a big chunk out of my armor at my last tournament, so I needed to have a healthy respect as I approached him. Three, two, one. Okay, that worked surprisingly well. The weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits definitely worked in my favor, and I was fortunate to get around to his wheels before he could turn into me and rip chunks out of my side. Even so, his titanium chassis stood up very well to my weapon, so the only thing I really damaged was his wheel. And while it may look like Cheesecake is invincible right now, this was actually the second weapon motor I opted to replace because of a bent shaft even though these are the motors I upgraded with stronger shafts. I think there's just too much leverage, too long of an arm, from the top of the motor to the bushing on my frame. I'll need to try and shorten that distance somehow. My fourth fight was a long-awaited rematch against Dulce de Lucha. This is the wedge bot that defeated me twice in the past, once by slamming me against the wall so I couldn't drive, and another time by tanking a direct hit from my weapon, which ripped it off completely. Dulce de Lucha may just be a candy wasp kit robot, but he knows how to use his titanium wedge to absolutely smother his opponents with aggressive driving. This meant it was finally time to break out the sweet tooth and see what it can do. Three, two, one, fight! Classic pin by Dulce de Lucha. Five, four, three, two, one. Cow. I actually did it. I defeated a wedge bot with my horizontal spinner. The sweet tooth definitely helped, but it wasn't as much of a game changer as I had hoped. Dulce de Lucha flipped himself over early on, which made it easier to outmaneuver him and rip off his wheel. I learned later that, when I ripped off his wheel, my weapon actually cut through his aluminum chassis, and then continued on to grab his wheel and rip it off. That is kind of scary. You can actually see, during this hit, that my weapon completely stopped, which means I transferred all my kinetic energy into Dulce de Lucha. Nice. What's not so nice is that the next couple of hits broke my weapon motor, and you can even see a big spark during the fight, after which my weapon stopped working. That's something I'll definitely need to fix. Maybe it's time to battle harden my motors like Robert Cowan taught us. This fight sent Dulce de Lucha into the loser's bracket, where he fought a baby nautiloid kit called Tax Evasion for a spot in the grand final against Cheesecake. Tax Evasion was hitting extremely hard, but Dulce de Lucha's smothering driving, combined with his lack of damage received, was able to win him the judge's decision. 
And so the final match was set. Cheesecake vs. Dulce de Lucha, round two, winner take all. And you know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I decided to run the exact same configuration a second time, relying on the Sweet Tooth to counter his wedge and stop him in his tracks. Let's see if it works. The Sweet Tooth worked perfectly. Collision after collision, you can see it doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Getting under the wedge, keeping me on the ground, and not letting Dulce de Lucha push me around. I was even able to lift him and flip him onto his back, which made him far less dangerous. Once I realized this, I throttled my weapon back up to full speed and went on the attack. The collision which sent Dulce de Lucha flying through the air actually bent his wedge so badly that it no longer sat flat on the floor. That was a surprise to everyone. With this final victory, Cheesecake won first place in the Antweight bracket, with a record of 5-0. This genuinely could not have gone better for Cheesecake. I'm extremely happy that all of my testing, all of my troubleshooting, and all of my painful losses are propelling me forward in this awesome sport. I'll see you next time.